Can everyone hear me? Yeah. yeah, so my name is Dan, and coming, and I'm representing here Technical University or Technical University Mission, how they would like to uh, call it. Um, I apologize right now, I really feel bad, bad after uh, Jurgen's presentation, but since I haven't heard any uh, uh, questions of where Munich is, then I didn't really prepare uh, uh, where are we located and what are we about. But I guess if I only mention Oktoberfest, then probably everyone will know where we're we coming from. So um, I'm here presenting the joint proposal between uh, three professors, three groups. Um, that's mine. So. Uh, uh, professor Michael Bates, who leads the Intelligent Autonomous Systems Groups. Um, so then we have uh, Professor Gordon Schenk, Schenk, who is a newly appointed professor at uh, the Chair for uh, Institute for Cognitive Systems, and uh, Professor, uh, Junior Professor Matthias Kranz. So the title of our uh, proposal is CREM, stands for Cognitive uh, Robot Asset Machines, and it's um, in one sentence basically a tool or a framework uh, that provides uh, uh, methods and algorithms that enable artificial intelligence driven uh, robotic research. So, uh, what does it provide? So, it actually provides compact control programs that enable performing uh, open ended sets of everyday manipulation tasks, such as, for instance, setting or, or laying the tables, uh, cleaning the tables, and also cooking the meals, for instance in human environments um, uh, in a very natural, general, skillful, flexible, and reliable manner. So the flavor of it um, could be actually seen on the following movie with our uh, Tomb Rosy robot, which is a KUKA-based platform with KUKA arms. And we, of course, uh, count that we'll be able to perform these task tasks way more efficiently with a PR2 robot, and of course, then also um, share them with you guys now that we have all the same platform. So, here is a flavor from our demonstration that we have in fall 2009, where our CRAM um, high level executive actually directed the robot to sense uh, objects on different tables and then transform them from the table one um, to table B. So, of course, from table one to table two. So of course, not very complex task yet, but we are aiming to, to further complicate and resolve this in the next um, two, two years. So a very special thing here, for instance, is uh, our CRAM enables um, reactive and uh, resurrective behavior. So it basically means that you can recover from failures, can detect the failures, and recovers from them. And uh, yeah, this, unfortunately, is not seen. In, in this video. And another feature which we can show in this video is basically the so-called persistent object store, where we continuously uh, detect all the planner patches, which are for us candidates that can hold the objects, and, and persistently store them in the memory, timestamp them, and also maintain the belief over them. I'm going to talk about this later on in the project a little bit in the talk. So, to start off, what we want to demonstrate <coughs> in general picture, we want to be able in two years to efficiently and robustly set and clean the table after the uh, human had meal on it, and um, also prepare two simple um, meals, such as, for instance, cooking, cooking the pasta. Um, the strong emphasis in our research will be on inferring the right actions and the action parameterizations, and also answering the right queries uh, to, uh, to these inferences. So example of these inferences, for instance, would be um, if the person is about to set the table and gets interrupted by a phone call in between, uh, how can the robot infer which objects are missing and basically complete the set for the, for the breakfast table, for instance. Uh, furthermore, where do the object typically belong? So where can one actually find tables, where, um, plates, uh, mugs, uh, cutlery, and so on and so forth? How the objects must be handled? And for instance, also, where the objects, uh, where, where the robot has to stand in order to be able to reach the object, which grass type to apply, where to grasp, and so on and so forth. 
In general picture, <coughs> we're going to contribute three modules. It's a CPL, it's a CREM planning language. Then we have the knowledge component, which we know, which we coined NOROP. And um, all these are actually interleaved with the perception navigation and manipulation stacks. And we are going to, in particular, contribute to the perception, uh, or, or even more in particular, to the PCL um, library that um, Wheelow Garage develops. So both stacks, so NOROP as well as CPL, can of course be extended with additional modules. These modules, for instance, uh, could be the previously mentioned uh, persistent uh, object store or the probabilistic reasoning component that applies different machine learning techniques and statistical, stati uh, statistical racial learning and so on and so forth. So on the perception side, we actually want to develop, uh, contribute to the PCL first and on the, on, on the other side also develop a system that is multimodal so can work with the different types of sensors, um, is testable, um, is based on object um, descriptions, so a geometrical as well as uh, a visual appearance ones, um, can, can reason, uh, can maintain the, the, the belief about the object throughout the uh, robot's working cycle, uh, where the system enables the objects to be timestamped and can also compute the symbolic scenes descriptions. In this case, for instance, it is demonstrated we have three timestamps of a of couple of objects perceived on the table, and we see that in the, time, in the time, if this is time zero, then in the time one, we actually got uh, two objects out of the view of the robot sensors. Um, with Marcologic Network, we were still able to maintain uh, relations between them and, and belief about the object states, and then in, in the timestamp two, when we detected the objects again, correctly matched um, the, um, uh, where they have moved, for instance. This is just a very simple example. Um, we have more complex one running on the robot as well. Secondly, um, we have a set of algorithms uh, that are being, at the moment, already implemented um, in the PCL. Uh, the one here is the one that, um, for instance, can complete rotational objects from the single view capture scenes. So we see in this case that we have captured the um, scene of the yeah, simple bowl or feature. And then with an assumption that this feature is actually rotational, and we, we were able to, um, to complete the, um, the, the, the whole uh, object shape. Furthermore, we also want to attack uh, scene perception. So, um, and um, as I said before, in the um, artificial intelligence driven way, which basically means that we would like to abstract um, all the perception structures, so images, uh, key features, uh, point clouds, and so on, um, on the sub, on the symbolic and sub-symbolic level. So, for instance, here we have an example of a full of a raw point cloud, where we detect the tables um, in the scenes and the objects lying on the tables, and then we actually abstract these um, um, situations, um, so these data types into the logical uh, uh, pro probabilistic query, which is basically enumerated here, uh, listed here. It basically just says that the, whole, that the objects with an identifier 45 uh, lying on the table 2 uh, was seen at the, at the uh, time instance uh, 23 and was observed with actually these special coordinates. So this actually allows us to issue the queries such as uh, where in the time there were, for instance, two objects present on the table two, or I don't know, when there was an object of type A and object of type B present on the table, on, on the table A. And if you connect this with the observation of human action, you can very well reason what, what, what has happened while, war, while a robot was performing its action, so we don't really confuse him. Or we have means to, to resolve the ambiguity um, of falsely detected objects. 